You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey, GH fans, it's Belinda from Soap Dirt here. And I have to confess that I spent some time today doing some deep thinking about the hints about the shooter who is taking out mob bosses. In particular, I was thinking about the whole thing with the name Stone and the fact that the person was a ghost. So I went down this rabbit hole and I came up with something interesting that I want to share with you. But first, please click subscribe if you have not. And I know when I tell you this, the reaction is going to be like, huh, maybe, or oh, you're crazy, or what, why, no. But hear me out, hear me out. So for the name Stone, we have several possibilities. Everybody's talked about it. First off, I just want to say, if anyone thinks there's a remote chance that it is Stone Cates, the brother of FBI agent Jagger Cates, it is definitely not him. Hopefully nobody's thinking this. That Stone died of complications of AIDS decades ago. They are not going to resurrect him and undo that. So I I saw somebody saying that on soap social media, and I was like, heck no, not going there. However, Jagger named his son Stone in honor of his brother, and yes, his name is a match, but there is just nothing at all that FBI agent John Cates said that in any way indicates that his son would be out taking shots at mob bosses. Also, there's the ghost thing, and that implies it's a dead person, and John's son is definitely not dead. So that leads us to think about dead people attached to the name Stone, right? First, of course, is Jason Morgan, a.k.a. Stone Cold, who's coming back on Monday. He's problematic for a few reasons. I have mentioned in some other videos, there's a possibility that he could be the shooter. Just because of the timing of everything and his comeback and that he might be holding a grudge of some sort. But, you know, the more I think about it and the more spoiler info that we have, the more I feel like that Jason is not the shooter, but we do know he is part of the shootout at the docks that happens on Monday. That's where Sonny and Ava and Selena are and where the cops are converging and I think where the FBI might be converging. And with this new spoiler out, then the less I'm now thinking that there's any possibility he's the shooter. In fact, I'm now wondering if Jason shows up there to protect Sonny from the shooter. So uh, in this spoiler photo, I can't show it to you because it's exclusive to People Magazine only. So Jason's in his standard black. He's not in the leather jacket. He's in a black like Henley kind of thing. Uh, long sleeve shirt, black gloves, and it looks like he catches a bullet. Uh, it's kind of dark, so it's hard to see if there's blood there or not, but there's the, definitely something on his shirt looks wet. So it's just hard to see because it is a black shirt, but it looks like he might be shot in the shootout. So I actually am feeling like Jason might be there to take down the shooter. Possibly, we'll see. That would mean the FBI is chasing the killer. The Port Charles Police Department is chasing the killer. Sonny and his gang is chasing the criminals. And if Jason is working on this too, that would mean four different factions chasing the same shooter, knocking off mob bosses. So just based on this new info from this photo that they gave to people... And then that that little snippet of Friday's promo for Monday's episode of Dante, who sees someone looks like he recognized. I'm leaning towards Jason not being the shooter and him not being the stone that we're talking about, nor the ghost that we are looking for. People have said in the comments here that if it were Jason, he would not miss Not entirely true. He does not always kill his prey. For instance, he shot Franco back when it was James Franco in the part, and Franco survived and came back when they recast with Roger Howarth. Jason has missed on shots. He is not a perfect shot. Not always. So there have been people that have survived encounters with him. But there is someone else to consider named Stone who is adjacent to to Jason Morgan. And that, of course, is Morgan Stone Corintho, Sonny's youngest son, who supposedly died years ago, but whose body was never found. If you don't remember, Olivia Jerome had placed a bomb on her brother Julian's car, and then Julian left the car parked on a street. Meanwhile, Ava Jerome had been replacing Morgan Corinthos's mental meds with something else so that he would be all messed up in his head. 
So he was in this full-blown bipolar spiral and he stole Julian's car and then the bomb blew him up instead of Julian. However, there was this cliff edge and I think a river below, same river Nell Benson fell into years ago, I'm assuming. Morgan's body was never found and he would match both the stone and the ghost hints since he is supposedly dead. That would definitely make him a ghost. And of course he has reason to take pot shots at Ava Jerome for messing with his mind and also for killing Olivia for planting the bomb that you know injured him or killed him I imagine if it were Morgan it would be a recast because actor Brian Craig is pretty busy with films and other TV shows I had the opportunity to interview him a few years back right after he first left General Hospital he is just a delightful really delightful polite nice sweet dude just by the way but he's also extremely busy with other projects he has said he would come back for the right plot but he's very busy right now I just don't think it him, it's him although he does fit the criteria. So never say never. I just don't know why he would be taking shots at his own dad, unless it's sort of the same grudge that Michael has about Sonny getting with Nina and dissing Carly and, you know, he's spending time with Ava. But when I was going down this ghost stone rabbit hole today, I decided to really do a deep dive into the stone thing. The ghost thing obviously implies someone back from the dead. So I just had in the back of my mind, okay, who's dead from General Hospital that might come back, that might be violent and doing this kind of thing? And I focused my thoughts then on the name Stone with the idea in mind of who is assumed dead on General Hospital. Here's the crazy thing I came up with. And I have to say, this is not something that I want to see, not something I cheer for. And I don't think it's something that a lot of you guys would want to see a slim faction, but not a lot. But I have to acknowledge once I found this out, okay, I have to consider this as a possibility. Let me be clear before I tell you this. I am not saying this is a spoiler, not a spoiler. I'm not saying it is definitely happening. I am saying based on the stone and ghost hints, this person fits. This person is dead and his first name is not stone, but it means stone. This person died two years ago. He's someone I could absolutely see buying Windermere Castle to use as a base of operation because his evil dad liked to lurk in the catacombs below the house on Spoon Island. If you have not guessed it yet, I'm talking about Peter August and you might be going, what, why, how? Let me get there. The name Peter means stone. Did you know that? Well, I damn sure didn't until today. I was just running the word stone through a language translator. Okay, I was trying German and Italian and Spanish and all this and came up with the name Pedro, which I know is the Spanish version of Peter. And then just to double check to make sure I wasn't being crazy, I Google what's the meaning of the name Peter and guess what? It is Greek or rock, or stone. The Cassidines are, you know, part Greek, part Russian. Yeah, so, and he's supposed to be dead, and he has ties to Jason Morgan, and to the Cassidines, and to Drew. It all kind of makes the Windermere purchase logical, and yeah, Peter has a reason to take a shot at Anna Devane because she sat there and watched him die without dialing 911 to save his life. And yes, he did die on the soap, but it's a soap. Death doesn't mean anything if they don't want it to mean anything. You can blow people up. You can drop them off cliffs. They can still come back from the dead. Uh, A lot of people have. So he could absolutely have been retrieved and revived by Victor Cassidyne, who was his, you know, co-conspirator or somebody at the WSB. Plus, there's the fact that Jason died fighting off Peter. Jason was trying to save Liesl and Drew and Britt in the caves in Greece. Don't forget that Peter kept Jason in storage as patient six the last time he came back. And if you think about it, Peter might have even been the one to dig Jason out of the rubble and put him back in storage again. I mean, he knew right where Jason was buried in the cave in because he was in the shootout with him in the cave. Jason supposedly died in late 2021, and then in February of 2022, just a few months later, Peter supposedly died. I mean, Victor could have had them both in cold storage, and then they both thought out after Victor died, and they went their separate ways. Just a quick timeline to consider. Jason dies November 2021. Peter dies February 22. 
More than a year later, May 2023, Victor dies. And then two months later, July 2023, the Metricourt shooting occurred. So if Peter was alive and being kept by Victor, Victor's death in May could have meant Peter could go free to run amok shooting people. The real problem with trying to parse how this plot is going to go is that it was begun by the old writers the Metricourt shooting, and then kind of abandoned. And then there was the gun thing and the pikeman thing, and then that was abandoned, and then they resurrected it. I honestly don't know if the old writers even had a culprit in mind at the time that they started that first shooting or change their minds. I mean, they are all over the place, and they have been known to abruptly change storylines, drop storylines, go in a new direction. Honestly, I'm pretty pleased they got fired because... I feel like they start plots, were starting plots all the time with no idea where they were heading. So now we have two new head writers, Mulcahy and Corte, and they they were tasked with writing Jason's return because the old writers allegedly did a hack job on it. And now we're heading into some sort of umbrella story, which will hopefully tie up loose ends. So wait to see. But when I find found out that the name Peter means stone, you know, and knowing he's dead, so he would be a ghost and that he hides a lot of people in Port Charles and he's a violent, bad person by nature because he's Faison's son. I just wanted to share this with you. I know it seems random and out of left field, but it fits. It fits. And there's one more thing to consider. Laura Wright, who plays Carly Spencer, is very much a favorite of showrunner Frank Valentini. That's why she gets so much more screen time than a lot of other characters. And she is still dating Wes Ramsey, who played Peter August. In fact, that was how Wes initially met Frank Valentini. He was dropping Laura off at work at GH, started chatting with Frank in the parking lot. Things evolved and he got hired to play Peter. That's why a lot of soap fans like to (laughs) pejoratively call him parking lot Peter. So would they resurrect Peter August and bring back Laura Wright's boyfriend, Wes Ramsey, to the ABC soap opera? Maybe. Maybe they would. And again, I'm not saying this is definitely happening. I'm just saying it's very interesting that the character Peter August fits the stone and the ghost clues. But let me know what you think. Click subscribe. Drop your comments about this. Come back soon. As always, it's Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 